couple of things of interest right here. This is your mount location on this particular engine for the fuel pump. We've got a gasket here. This one I made a homemade. I could have gone in and drawn it up on the computer made with a laser, but homemade one will do for this. They like to sell you sets for this engine for as much as $300. That's ridiculous because I had virtually everything in stock. And so I'm not going to pay 300 bucks to get this. Besides the fact, if you want to get the stuff at the right price, look at something like Rock Auto instead of pay $300. You can get it for under $200. Looking over here, two other holes that you should know about. This is the output going to the inlet side of your external oil filter on this engine. This is the return back into the pan on the engine. If we had it upside down, you'd find out that this particular hole goes directly through. That's how you know it's the return. When putting your fuel pump on, I use Aviation Permatex behind the gasket as well as on the front of the fuel pump. So put the little fuel pump in there. And one of the nice things about having it apart is you can work with it a whole lot easier and put things together and be sure you get your arm in the right place and then tighten it all down. The one side has a stud as you saw, the other side uses a bolt. When installing your valve cover, note that your gasket under your valve cover needs to be glued to the valve cover and not to your block. Suggested to use it with contact cement to the valve cover and again don't put anything at all on the other side towards the block. These two points you'll notice they're copper washers. You need to have copper washers here to seal. If you don't do that you're going to get leaks at those two points. When looking up here underneath your manifold assemblies you'll notice that we have gram style keepers all the way along the bottom and you have brass nuts. All the nuts must be brass. The brass nuts will not come undone through the heating and cooling cycles on the engine. You cannot use anything but brass nuts here. The little center bolt there also has a copper washer. Always remember that's necessary. Same thing for sealing. And one other thing to note, the front, one of these bolts, didn't mention it before, but you probably noticed, it's got the hole in it. It has to be there because we have to put the air duct on the side of the engine next. All right, when installing the air horn, you've got two long bolts here. They go in the back of the air horn. Got your hole here, which has to line up at the front of the air horn. So you work it in here. Get your two holes to line up in the back. Take your bolt and find the front, which takes some doing since you're kind of doing it blind. But that's ultimately what you have to do. Find that hole and get your bolt to start. Now installing the air duct is a vital item on a supercharged Gram engine because what you're actually doing is providing a way to keep from getting vapor lock with the fuel pump and fuel line. Like a lot of things on cars, they wouldn't be here if they weren't necessary because cars, cars are made on the bird theory, cheap, cheap, cheap. So this is actually a necessary part. Don't decide, ah, I don't need that. You actually do, and it works really well. Later on, you'll see that we actually route the fuel line up through the air duct. That's not original, but we've never had a vapor lock problem by doing that. Whereas originally, the fuel line would have gone up right around here in the vertical way, and that to us doesn't seem as good as actually routing it down through the air duct. Looking at the front timing cover on the engine, there are some things of note here. You have the special mount bolt that goes here. That's going to be for your supercharger tensioning system. Around here, a number of these bolts screw directly into the block. This, of course, is a nut on the stud. Some of the bolts, though, screw only into the plate, such as this one here. This one here, this one here, and this one here. Also, this one is screwing into the plate itself, doesn't need a nut. This one, this one, and this one are screwing into the block or into a portion of the engine behind. Important though, every single one of those is currently loose. They're just in place because of the next step we're going to get to in a moment. 
couple other things to note we had a washer under this one because of the hole size there and this one here is a modification from original as we told you we run the fuel line up through the air duct to help keep it cool use a rubber mount uh, bracket here like you can get in a hardware store and yes this is a modern solution and we put it on this bolt and we'll tighten it up there so that's our fuel line running in a non-standard location but it's worked great for me for the last 20 some years so that's the way I would suggest running it what we're going to do now is we're going to install the double pulley right here which fits for the belts that drive the supercharger the reason all these bolts are loose at this time is if you tighten those up and you try to install this pulley you'll either damage the seal or it won't seal at all so you want to keep them loose when you're putting it together now you notice we haven't changed our timing we have kept the timing just as we showed you earlier so this is exactly as if it is timed perfectly for firing on the number one cylinder we'll get to that more in a minute so you've got to get your pulley started on here directly onto where your keyway is and since I'm having to have to look past this for the camera I'll probably have to shut the camera off for a moment to get it on there right and then get back with you once you have your pulley system driven on here and yeah you do have to drive it on even if everything's all lined up you're gonna to have to drive it on with like a wooden block and a hammer don't use anything such as a steel piece because you're working against a cast piece and you don't want to break it but when you drive it on with all this loose now your seal will fit properly next thing you're going around and you tighten everything up around it before you even put on your next piece here so that's the next step I'll tighten that all up and I won't bore you with that the rear of the Graham 217 as well as Kaiser engines and Continental engines of this type happen to have a Zamac casting. They also have a Zamac casting up front. The rear Zamac casting uses a rope seal along the crankshaft. You have to put that in before you put this casting in place. Right down here on the bottom on both sides I use Aviation Permatex. We already have our pan gasket of course installed. In this little groove you're supposed to put in a rubber or cork depending on what your gasket said it came with it was cork originally seal that's going to be part of the oil pan seal no matter what you use especially if you're using the rubber you need to contact cement these to the zamac or they're going to move when you put that oil pan on and off ever and i guarantee you'll get a leak so always contact cement them in place I've got contact cement in there and i'm going to put the actual rubber seal in here now make sure you press it in real good and that you have good contact all the way around at this point it's appropriate to add the water pump fan the generator and the supercharger drive assembly to the front of the engine each of these items uses standard fasteners and it's not too hard to do other than the fact that the generator you want to make sure that the fan pulley system does not run into the supercharger drive you get the wrong length fan belts on here it will run into it so make sure your fan belts are the correct length make sure you're not going to run into anything it's important to get the supercharger drive quite tight the way you're going to do that is you know on your outrigger piece there are teeth there are also teeth on the piece that goes over the outrigger piece there's a small knurled piece at the bottom of that tooth assembly on the supercharger drive you have to pull down on it use a wooden handle hammer and pull it over as far as you can and get it real tight then release that knurled piece that locks the teeth in place it's probably the hardest part of doing this all the rest of the fasteners are really straightforward the only other thing to keep in mind is you've got to use aviation permatex for mounting the gasket to mount the water pump to the engine use it on both sides if you don't do this you're going to get a leak and it is not a preferable thing to use silicone on gram engines in fact you really shouldn't do it if you've got everything clean and use the aviation permatex you'll be able to seal everything up just fine all of this assembly on this area other than saying the supercharger drive is really quite easy we have our cylinder lubed with our assembly lube 
We're going to set our piston in here. I've got all the .020s to my side of the engine. And we're going to endeavor to get this to go down in this hole. I'm going to tap the ring compressor, trying to get it even all the way around the bottom down there against the cylinder block. See if we can get this to push in. And we have a piston in the cylinder. I'll wipe off the little bit of dirt that came off my wood block. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is we're going to have to tap it down so we can install our bearings because I don't install the bearings till it's in because you tend to knock the bearings out. So we're going to have to tap it down until it comes up to our crankshaft. And just so you know, I've got the crankshaft set at bottom dead center so I have the most possible movement with the rod down there on the bottom so it's at the furthest throw I could make for that cylinder. Now we'll tap it in further. Now once again I'm getting a little bit of dirt off of my block. Now it's for white. And this is where the engine stands are going to come in nice because we're going to flip this and I'll go this way around. I'm going to bring it down so we can see what's going on with it by putting it sideways here for a moment. We can see where our rod journal is clear down here. And we can see our rod coming down and we're gonna bring it in the rest of the way. Okay, everything's looking pretty good. Now at this point, I'm going to turn it all the way over, so the piston is going to be facing down. That way I can get to where I have to be to install the rod bearing. So now we've got our rod in position, and we're going to lube the world up and install the rod bearing. I like to go all over the top and put, and put some in the hole. I like to put a lot of oil on here. In this case, there's no such thing as too much oil. Now the oil is also going to run around. That's another reason you put on a lot of extra oil. So it runs all the way around the actual journal. Like I said, be generous here. grab a rod bearing. The thing to note with these bearings is they're keyed. So just as you have right and left rods, you have right and left bearings. So this bearing has to be in the key. So you see I'm setting it down in here and my fingers are a little large for the area but I find this is the best way to do it even though it's a little hard to get in here initially. Close. There. Now it's in place. Now we can tap our rod the rest of the way by tapping on our piston to bring it up. So I'm back here underneath where I'm going to tap the rod up to the journal. got it in place. Now I noticed that my bearing is a little high on this side at the moment, which means it's low on the opposite side. And I just tap it, try and tap it down a little bit, get it back in position a little better. Now we'll bring in the rod cap and you're going to want to oil it even though we've got oil on the journal. We're going to put a little extra oil in there. only goes on one way because it's got pins. So you've got to set up your pins the correct direction. 
Put your rod cap in place. As you can see, I'm tapping it together just a little bit. And then we start our bolts. Now I'm going to have to move this particular one just a bit because of the oil pump here. I've already got the engine, so I'm going to rotate the engine just a bit for you. get started. Now again, because the oil pump's already in here, we're going to have to actually rotate this enough so we can tighten everything up. There we go. First I'll use a little ratchet and just tighten these up roughly. set our torque on. One. Got two. Then I'm going to rotate and make sure everything's still happy. And it is. Everything's rotating nicely. I'm actually set up for the number one now. Things to remember here, you have right and left rods. One, three, and five are the same. Two, four, and six are the same. So always make sure you number your rods and it's best to put them back in the same holes just so you know you've got the evens and the evens instead of confusing yourself and mixing your evens up even. So remember, one, three, five are the same. Two, four, six are the same. 